Hello, welcome back to another episode. So today is going to be a fun one. We're going to learn how to pass data between from our controller to our view files and also learn more about Laravel Blade and Laravel different Laravel Blade directives, the most common ones that you guys are going to use in your applications. So on the previous episode, we created our first controller here. We have our dashboard controller and our welcome.blade file. I'm going to actually go ahead and re rename this welcome to dashboard. I don't like that the names are not the same. So I call it a dashboard dot blade dot PHP. I'm also going to go ahead and uh, change that in our controller file. So I'll save both. And basically we have the same thing we had on the previous episode. So first let's see how we can actually send some data from our controller down to our blade file. So I already have gone ahead and kind of created an array. This is an associated array and inside it, I have two smaller arrays, which both contain a name and an age, right? So think of it like some data we got from our database, right? Right now, we don't know how to interact with the database, but let's assume we got this from the database. We could have read this from a file or maybe an API call. That's not really important. So how can we send this or pass this to our view file? Now, if you actually, take a look at the view function here. It has a second argument called data, and that's how you would actually do it. So you would pass it as a second argument to this view function. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, create a new array inside here. I'll write it and I'll show you guys, explain it to you guys how it works. So basically, this is the process for sending data from your controller down to your views. You would create an array, and in that array, you can pass as many data as you like. So for us, I want to pass this user's variable. So I'll create a key. Uh, you can name this whatever you like. In this case, I'll just name it users. And then what do you want this key to be equal to, right? So I'm going to assign it to users. And you would then be able to use a variable named users inside your blade file, right? So if this was lists, we would basically be able to access that variable with the name list inside our blade file, right? And I actually, to avoid confusion, I'm gonna name this users list for now. Later on, I'll change it back to users. So now let's go ahead to our uh, dashboard file and I'm gonna actually use PHP here. So I'm gonna get rid of this and we're going to go old school and write some PHP code. And how should we do it? So I'm just going to say users list, get the first element for me, and also show me the name, right? And I forgot the echo here. And I didn't mention this in the previous episode. You can actually write PHP code inside your blade file. Technically, you are allowed, even though you will never see anyone do that. It's not really a good practice, but since we are learning, I'm going to start with PHP first. So I'm just going to write a simple PHP code. You guys should be used to this. I refresh our page and we can see Alex here. So the code is actually working and we are actually able to pass data from our controller down to our views. Now I don't really like this users list. So I'm actually going to go ahead and change this back to users, but I just wanted to use the users list name to, uh, you know, show you guys that it's not based on the variable name you have inside the controller. It's based on what you define as the key in your array. So now that I have done that, I'll turn this back to users and I'll refresh the page. We get the same results. So let's go ahead and actually display the names in our list. And I'm going to first actually do it the old school way using PHP. And later on, we will learn how to do it with Laura Blaze. So I'm going to create a for each loop users as a user. I think that's pretty nice. And I'm going to have to create an opening and closing PHP tags, which is very annoying, but that's the way to do it. I'll open a H1 tag and inside it, I'll basically echo user name. And I get rid of this one. So this is basically how you would go ahead and loop through a list or an array in vanilla PHP, right? And that's how you guys probably have been doing it so far. And it worked just fine. So I'll just go refresh the code and we have an error. Oops, I add an extra echo. We don't need to do that. And you can see it is working. We get Alex and Dan, that's the names in our list or our array. 
Now, what's the issue with this? Well, first of all, it's a bit, you have to write a lot of opening and closing PHP tags. That's the first issue. So you have to write more code. The second issue I think is with PHP, it's very annoying and it's kind of, uh, it makes your code cluttered, especially when you're trying to mix HTML and PHP tags. And you guys might have noticed this. It's very annoying when you have a complicated PHP HTML tag, you constantly have to open a PHP tag, close it, open it, close it. It gets very messy and cluttered over time, especially if you have a large page with a lot of HTML. Laravel Blade actually solves that. It also helps us just write code, code faster and also gives us a bunch of extra features that you generally don't have with vanilla PHP or you have to write a lot of code to achieve. So let's rewrite this using Laravel Blade. Now with Laravel Blade, you would use the at sign. Usually all the Laravel Blade directives start with an at sign. So you use the for each, it's named exactly like you, it is in PHP and I'm gonna call it users as user. And instead of a closing curly bra bracket or braces, we're gonna use end for each. So the names are a little bit different. It's actually a bit more descriptive than you know opening and closing curly braces. So that's it. And inside here, if you wanna actually echo something, instead of writing it like this, you have two opening curl braces and two closing curl braces or brackets. And inside it, you can actually use any, write any PHP code you want. So I'm gonna say user name. And, and it will automatically echo it. So I no longer need to write echo. Laravel Blade will automatically do it for me. And I'm gonna save this, go back, and we get this exact same result. The difference is with Laravel Blade, we are writing less code. It actually looks a lot cleaner and it's a lot easier on the eyes. And if you wanna also uh, at the age, I think here we had, yeah, we had a second key age. We can easily do that as well. And that's it. I'll save it. I'll go back and you can see it's working just fine. And I'll add a line between them so we can distinguish them. So that's actually how you would go about uh, using Laravel Blade instead of PHP, right? So, and from now on, I'm no longer gonna be writing PHP inside our view file. We're gonna always be using Laravel Blade because it's cleaner, it's faster, and it gives you a bunch of cool features that we will use as we go along and also allows you to create your own custom components, which are really cool. All right, so now I'm gonna actually add an extra item here. I'm gonna say John, and I'm gonna say John is 17. And I want to actually uh, write down that John cannot drive or can't get a license because he's under 18. So how do we go about doing that? You can actually add if statements in your uh, blade file as well. We're just calling doing at sign if. And if you guys are using VS Code or PHP Storm, I think auto completion should suggest you guys what you can use. I'm going to say if, and inside here I'm going to say user age is less than 18 and i'm just gonna put a simple message doesn't really matter user can't drive something like this and i'm gonna save it and if you notice with the if statements it opens with the if and it closes with end if right and they always have the at sign at the front that's how you know it's a blade directive so I reload it and you can see, I need to move this HR under it. So, and we can see here for Alex, we don't get a message for Dan, we don't, but for John, because it's less than 18, we get this can't drive message here or shown here. So that's another thing you can do with Blade. You can add if statements, basically anything you can do with the regular uh, PHP, you can also do in Blade. And yeah, so that's all the things I wanted to show you guys for today. Uh, one more thing is you can also use PHP func functions inside of these uh, curly braces. So for example, let's say you have a footer and here I'm going to create a very uh, simple copyright message. So for example, copyright, and then I wanted to, for example, here show 2023 and I want it to be dynamic. One way you can do that is by basically doing what we had done here, but use a PHP function. So I'm gonna use a date PHP function and I'm gonna put Y here. And as you can see, 
it is showing 2023. So you are also able to use any PHP function that you're able to use anywhere else inside Blade as well. So it gives you all the functionality that you need. And yeah, so that's all for today's episode, guys. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions or something's not clear, you can always ask me in the comment section below. Don't forget to leave a like and also subscribe so you're updated on the next episode. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day.